Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here with uh, Cal's Travers family head football coach, Justin Wilcox. We'll go ahead and get started with Thomas Dunn. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, good morning, Justin. Uh, a question a little bit out of left field, but you've been partaking in the Cal Oregon matchup your whole life as a family member, a player, a coach. Uh, given your ability to stay focused in the moment, are there any special slash emotional feelings on this being the last game that these two play together as a member of the pack and any particular memories you have from this matchup? Um, no, I mean, we're just so in the moment with what we're working on right now. Um, you know, there's, we talked about this last week, there's a lot of, I guess they're lasts. I mean, we'll see where all this goes in the next, you know, five years, 10 years with, uh, conferences and all that. Um, and I, I do have feelings about the conference uh, realignment, but now is not the time to discuss that. We're 100% focused on the game this weekend. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and go to Jeff Ferrado. Go ahead, Jeff. Justin, can you give us an update on injuries and in particular with Jaden Ott? And also, can do you have concerns about his ability to stay healthy because he's gotten banged up pretty good in a number of games for you guys. Yeah, we expect uh, Jaden to be back um, for the game this weekend. Uh, you know, he's uh, yeah he's had had a, a few games this year where he's kind of been dinged up, but he you know thing about Jaden, he really wants to get back in there and um, he's doing everything he can. Uh, obviously, that's between he and the sports med staff, the trainers and doctors, and uh, we are. Uh, ready for him to get back full speed. And uh, when he's out there, he's obviously a dynamic player. So we're looking forward to having him back. Uh, in terms of the uh, rest of the guys, uh, Isaiah Fonts is day-to-day, uh, Mo Iosefa day-to-day. Um, let's see here, Ethan Saunders is probable. Derek Wilkins week to week at this point and Ray Woody would be doubtful. Uh, Sam Jackson, uh, the same, is uh, doubtful. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Steve Croner from the Chronicle. I'm Justin, this might be a, a hard question or question to answer, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Given how well in that uh, Fernando has played the past three games, is there any thought that two months ago, if you'd known this, that Fernando might have been the number one guy starting at North Texas. Could you rephrase, rephrase that or ask that again? What are you asking, Steve? Yeah, sure. I, uh, I, I got a, I got my tongue tied. Sorry. That's all right. If you knew, if you knew two months ago what you know now, w would you have started Fernando at North Texas? Well, I think that's a hard question to answer, Steve. Honestly, because uh, players continue to develop and. Uh, learn from experience and not everybody develops at the same rate and you know you, you really do the best you can based on uh, performance and practice especially when guys haven't played and uh, he's done a great job of continuing to get better I still think the other quarterbacks on our team have talent and continue could continue to develop into good football players um, but uh, I guess you know, with using the rear view mirror, there's a lot of decisions, you know, I mean, you could look, I could look at the game every week. And if I knew what would happen on a given play, I'd, I'd like to go back and maybe change something. I mean, I think that's kind of the game of football, but, uh, you know, uh, he's done a, he's done a good job and he, he continues to get better. Uh, he's very, very competitive and, uh, we just want to see him continue to grow at that position. Great. Thank you. Okay, there are others with first round questions. Okay, if not, we'll go back to Jeff Ferrado. Go ahead, Jeff. Justin, uh, on the subject of Sam, when he becomes healthy, do, is there any inclination to like move him to wide receiver uh, while also maybe allowing him to continue to, uh, to be the backup quarterback? I realize that's probably a lot on one guy's plate, but he's got some experience there and he's an awfully good athlete to just have stand on the sidelines all the time. I'm wondering. Yeah, the first. Is, yeah. Long term for him. Yeah, long. T well, the first thing is is his health. We got to get Sam uh, healthy, uh, and so we'll know more this week on where that's headed. Um, he is a 
a very talented athlete, and we're glad he's on the team. We want to continue to work with him and develop him as a football player. Um, but I think it'd be way too soon to talk about any of that. You know, he's a quarterback. Uh, he was developing as a quarterback. He's he got dinged up. Um, you know, Fernando's done a great job with his opportunities. Um, so we'll see where where all that goes. But we want to continue to work with him and develop him as a quarterback. We want him to get healthy, and and uh, that's really our main focus right now. So there's not been no thought or conversation about that at this point. Not at this point. Okay, and, and on a different topic. Um, you continue to seem like you get a little bit from Javion Thomas. He cut the touchdown pass and gave you a chance to possibly tie the game. Can you talk about his progress and, you know, especially if Afonso's out, it seems like he, his role could, could be elevated. Um, yeah, we, we wanted to continue to get him more involved here in the last month. And um, he's obviously got some speed. He's a competitive guy. He's not the biggest guy in the world, uh, but – really uh, eager to continue to get him more involved with the offense. And so it was great to see him make that play. It was a nice throw, a nice catch and run by him. Uh, he's still got areas where he can improve, but I really like his competitiveness, his toughness, and the speed that he brings. And is Justin Williams Thomas going to be a bigger uh, factor going forward, especially with your injuries? We'll see. Obviously, at that position, we're a bit banged up, um, and it's we've kind of needed everybody in that room. Uh, you know, with the if you look back even to spring, the numbers of backs that uh, we've had we have on the roster is rather large, and the number of guys that have played that's pretty significant. So uh, everybody's gotten their opportunity, and uh, you know Justin's been able to get back in the mix a bit, and we're glad that uh, he was able to help us uh, this past game, and we'll see where it goes from here. All right, thanks. Okay, we go to Jake Curtis with Cal Sports Report. Yeah, besides the fact that Oregon has been really good. Uh, over the last several years. Is there a reason Austin Stadium is particularly tough? Well, it's loud, really loud. Have you been up there? Yes, I have, not Yeah, recently. Yeah, it's a great environment. It's a uh, great environment to play in. Our guys will enjoy it. I mean, it's a, it is a, it's a really good uh, college football environment. I mean, and so the noise is, is significant. You had to have a plan for that. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. And the other thing, who, who if uh, Isaiah can't play, who would be the number two running back? Well, we're working through that. Um, we're hoping to get Isaiah back for the game. He's like I said, he's day to day, and he's. A, I mean, that guy is as tough as they come. So um, if it's physically possible and he's cleared by the doctors, I'm sure he'll be out there. And uh, you know, if if he's not able to go, there's uh, a few other guys that'll have to step up and and carry the load. And uh, you know, we've already talked about a couple of them uh, already today. So. We'll see throughout the week how that shakes out. Okay, we'll go to uh, back to Steve Croner. Hey, Justin, another one of those. I'm sure you're not wasting more than 35 seconds thinking about it, but the ACC announced uh, the schedule for the next seven years, and I'm sure you saw yours. Any uh, quick thoughts on uh, the ACC schedule for the Cal Bears next season? Uh, they laid it on my desk yesterday, and then it was uh, I saw it on the – one of these TVs that's in the lobby here, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly verbatim. I know what it is. We're excited to be able to uh, get the opportunity to play uh, those teams next year. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be great. But we just got so much we're we're concerned with right now that uh, it's really not something we're all talking about. Um, I'm sure there'll be an appropriate time to discuss that, but now is not that time. Understood. Okay, we'll go back to Jeff Ferrano. A couple of questions about Oregon, if I can. Uh, you just, you, you're seeing a string of incredibly good quarterbacks all season. Um, can you talk a little bit about Bo Nix? And he's completing 78% of his passes, which seems almost like a video game. Can you talk about how effective he is and and how he separates himself maybe from those other guys you're seeing? Yeah, there there's some elite quarterback play in our conference, as we're seeing. Um, uh, Bo Nix, yeah, he's, I think he's uh, over 78% completion percentage. <clears throat> he uh, does a lot at the line of scrimmage. You know, some teams you'll see, uh, they got they got great scheme, no doubt. And you'll see some teams where, you know, they'll get up there and freeze it and everybody looks at the sideline and the coach kind of plays Madden. Uh, you'll see, you know, with Bo Nix, he handles a lot at the line of scrimmage. Um, so he knows what he's doing. He knows where to go with the ball. They don't get sacked. Uh, I think they're... 
leading the country and and uh, protecting the quarterback, and that's obviously the the guys up front, but and the scheme, and also the quarterback. Everybody's involved in that. Um, but yeah, he's an excellent player. Uh, they're averaging a you know 45 points over 45 and over 500 yards a game, and it all starts with the quarterback. But you know, with that, they got a, a really really big physical O line. They got a great talent at tight end. The receivers are playmakers. The running back is a special player. So they're uh, they're very good, and he's. Uh, He's a, a really, really talented guy that it plays at a high level. And defensively, they're among the national leaders in fewest rushing yards allowed, which is one of the things you guys do real well. It is, talk about their run defense and how much of that is a function of the fact that people always get way behind them and so they can't run the ball as much, or, or is it just because they're real stout? Um, I think both those things are true. Uh, they are physically... Um, defensively, they're very, very impressive physically. I think they play, oh, geez, 10 or 12 guys up front. And there's some uh, very talented, talented players in that group. And they rotate a bunch of players. They're really big. Uh, and they're, e they're very, very big on the edges. You know, there's some great edge players in our conference. These guys are great edge players, too. Um, the interior D-line... Uh, as gifted as anybody you'll you'll see, and then the edges are big, like 290, 270, 270. They're just a, a really big physical front, uh, and they play a lot of people. You when you put them all together, their offense, defense, even you got a great kicker and punter. I know um, it seems like you're playing the latest best team in the league every week. How do these guys compare to the Washington? I, mean, I know they lost the Huskies by three on the road, but but is this as good a team as you have in your league? Uh, yeah, physically, they're, uh, you know, it's hard to compare this, that, and the other, but I know even if you talk to the, like the NFL guys that come through here, they've assembled a very, very talented team up there, and they're playing at a high level. They got good schemes. They're well coached, so it's a, uh, it'll be a great challenge for us. Our guys are excited to play, and uh, they're, a, they're a very, very talented team. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we'll go back to Thomas Dunn. Uh, Justin, the forecast for this weekend is uh, not necessarily looking too kind. So how are you guys going into preparing for the possibility of a rainstorm to fill the game? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we got uh, buckets everywhere and uh, quarterback and receivers. We got water bottles and buckets and uh, spraying them down. So that's how. Handle, how are they handling the, that uh, new uh, variable? Great. Any other questions? Go back to Jeff Frado. Jeff? Uh, perhaps a silly question, Justin, but on the topic of, uh, of rain and quarterbacks, uh, Jared Goff had a famously terrible game up there and an unbelievable rainstorm they had, as much rain as people in Eugene say they've ever had at one time, and he couldn't even grip the ball. Uh, how's your guy, Fernando? Uh, able to cope with that kind of uh, weather. He had uh, probably had some rain in Miami, I'm sure, but but uh, how's he coping? Great. Uh, he's got, we have a one of the uh, uh, managers on the team is in charge of you know, spraying Fernando's hands and the ball down before every snap. And he's all about it. And he's got, I mean, most of the time, uh, Jeff, that comes down to hand size. You know, guys with bigger hands can grip the ball easier when it's wet than guys with smaller hands. And uh, so he's done, a, he's done a really good job with that. And, uh, you know, he, he's all about it. I mean, he's, he's the one that's demanding more water on the ball and more water on his hands, as you can imagine. It's, it's a kind of a deal where, as silly as it sounds, I think Jared had to like, overcome that reputation for a while with the smaller hands. And I take it Fernando's hands are adequate for the job? Yeah, he's done great with it. Yep. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Any final questions for Coach? Thank you. Okay.